truth is simple yet difficult to comprehend before i begin actually to expound the sutras of buddha that are a dialogue between buddha and subhuti the sutras that are simply known as the diamond sutra or patra chedika prajna paramit sutra certain things have to be explained i have explained the name vajra means thunderbolt it is a device that cuts the hardest of the metals weapons vajra is the official weapon of the hindu god indra whenever he has to subdue any enemy he will hurl his special weapon called vajra chedika means that has the capacity to pierce if you have to cut the tiles you need the tile cutter which has a diamond point glass cutter has a similar even for cutting the iron plates diamond point is needed and prajna means wisdom how to pierce the layers of wisdom truth is simple and yet utterly difficult to comprehend indeed truth is difficult to comprehend because it is simple to be put into the words it is simple and your minds are so complicated that you cannot understand anything which is simple mind will go on missing it truth is so simple that it gives no challenge to you it is so simple that you will pass by the side of it and remain completely unaware that you have passed the truth truth is simple because truth is obvious simple does not mean easy the simplicity is very complex if you enter in it you will be lost you may never be able to get out of it that simplicity has depth in it it is not shallow and to attain to that simplicity you have to lose many things and to lose those things is difficult take for instance the diamond sutra of buddha look difficult to you three sutras are illogical if you can lose your logic they will be simple the difficulty comes from your mind not from buddha sutra buddha is a very simple person he is simply stating a fact but the problem arises from you because you cannot accept the simple fact you have your ideas and those ideas will interfere you say how can this be if this man is right then my whole logic gets shattered and that you cannot accept your whole education system training has been based on logic it goes on stating in logical things he is helpless at that plenitude logic does not exist what can he do at that plenitude everything is paradoxical at that plenitude opposites meet contradictories become complementary what can you do? he has to assert them the problem is arising from your mind you want those truths to be translated according to your logic and that is not possible if a high school student of physics objects the theory of relativity of albert einstein because it is illogical and difficult to understand according to him firstly it is boring and whenever it is explained it he inevitably falls asleep secondly it is unbalanced look at the equation e is equal to mc square he has put one figure all by itself on the other side of the equation and three others all together on the other side this is unrealistic why didn't he move one of those figures to the left side to make the equation look more symmetrical that is why he hates it such is the understanding of those who have not reached even close to the level of understanding of albert einstein 
Now he is raising beautiful questions. He is not symmetrical. What kind of education is this? Both sides are not equal. This is unartistic. Just by putting one figure on the other side, things would have been far better, more symmetrical. The boy is completely unaware of what he is talking about and whatever he is saying looks logical. But the Einstein's formula is not there to entertain you. It is to express reality. If you are bored with it, that simply shows you are very dull-witted and you cannot understand that penetrating insight of a Buddha of science. It is said that only 12 persons used to understand Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Why? All around the earth only 12 persons. Truth is simple. But when you have to go into its details, when you start penetrating into its reality, it becomes difficult. St. Augustine is reported to have said, everybody knows what time is. I know what time is. But when somebody asks me what is the time, try to explain it to me, then I am at a loss. You know what time is. You live according to time. Six o'clock every morning you get up and seven o'clock in the night you go to sleep. 12 noon you take your lunch, you go to the office, you come home, you use time. You know what time is, but can you explain it? The moment you try to explain it becomes elusive. You have never seen it, you cannot hold it, touch it or have it in your hands. You cannot grasp it. What is it then? St. Augustine is right. The problem arises when you try to explain it. Light is so simple. It is all around dancing on the trees. The whole sky is full of light. Try to explain it to the blind man and he will be bored and will say, stop all this nonsense. You seem to know nothing of light. Therefore, you will find it very difficult to put it into words or drop the question of light. It is a scientific question. You may not be interested in it. You have love. You know what love is. You must have loved. At least you must have loved your mother, your father, your sister, some woman, your wife, your husband or your children. Can you explain what love is? Then you become dumb. Then suddenly you lose all intelligence. It is as if somebody has simply struck you dead. You become paralyzed. What is love? Can you define it? Love is everybody's experience, more or less. But nobody can define it. Nirvana is not everybody's experience. Only once in a while this happens. And Buddha is trying to explain to you that, trying to explain what Nirvana is through the Diamond Sutra. And you find it difficult to understand. Can't you see the shallowness of your logic? Can you not see the dilemma of the Master who is trying to say the unsayable? Truth is simple, but the moment you try to explain it, it becomes difficult. But remember, you are not here only to be entertained. In no way I am against entertainment either. Entertainment is good, but it has its own time. Indeed, sometimes something more than entertainment is needed. Only that will become your enlightenment. Enlightenment is very lower need. Entertainment is a very lower need and enlightenment is the highest need. And entertainment is the seed which blossoms into enlightenment always. If you simply go from one entertainment to another, 
you will remain shallow you will never grow you will remain immature this is what is happening in humanity you have to sometimes go into the depths of life and love and light in god sometimes you have to fly into eternity to have a taste of it only that will make you mature sometimes even for a day try to be a human being sometimes even for a single moment try to be a human being or act as buddha in all his understanding even for an hour you will not remain the same i repeat it again sometimes even try to be a buddha even sometimes even try to be a human being we are this we are that but we are never a human being or act as buddha in all his understanding even for an hour you will not remain the same i understand your difficulties you say i do not enjoy the sutras of buddha then what to do learn how to enjoy as you have learned to enjoy many things in life that are all meaningless leaving the diamond sutra will be foolishness now learn how to enjoy higher things there are higher things if you want to enjoy classical music you will have to learn you cannot go and enjoy it for everything you have to develop a taste it needs a certain preparation in you it needs a certain receptivity in you it is not vulgar it needs a certain understanding in you you need to have a deep understanding of the sound and silence because music consists of sound and silence both it is not only sound it contains silence in it as well it is only in the silent moments that music enters you it is only in the silent moments that music enters you the music becomes higher and deeper when it contains more silence in it when it provokes your silence when it penetrates your heart and releases your inner silence when listening to it your mind disappears your thoughts stop only then you can enjoy the real music but then you will have to learn you will have to go through a certain discipline you have to become more meditative only then one day you will be able to enjoy it but if you want to enjoy it right now and you are not ready for it do not blame the music never say buddha sutras are boring it is better to say that you are not capable yet to understand that plenitude oh that you are not capable of looking to that height or that you are not cap- capable enough to climb the everest of consciousness that buddha is buddha is talking from the highest peak you will have to move from your dark valley to a little bit you will have to climb